It's Rand Delicious. You're listening to the SEO Rant. My name is Morty Oberstein. I am your host. You might know me better as the official liaison over at Wix to the SEO community. But let me remind you, once again, this has absolutely nothing to do with that. This is pure unofficial Morty magic. Where can you find the SEO Rant? You can find it at theseorant.com. Where do you think you're going to find it, ESPN? No, theseorant.com. You can find us on Twitter at SEO Rant, on Stitcher, on Spotify, on SoundCloud, wherever great, mediocre, and terrible podcasts are found. We are there. Today, for your listening pleasure, we have a search engine journal author, a conference speaker. She loves SEO and psychology. She is the head of SEO at Erudite. I got it right this time. She is <laughs> Miracle in a Medi Archibong. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Matt. Oh, now I got you. <laughs> now I got your name. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's totally I'm fine. fine, thank you, Medi. Thanks for having me on. My my absolute pleasure. So I'm glad I got it right. So I had um just James on. Yeah. Who I believe you work with, and I couldn't get the name of erudite right for the life of me but i got it right this time i'm pretty sure i botched it on the actual podcast we kind of skipped over it and it is you know it is what it is yeah lots of people seem to think it's french or something foreign and then i'm like yeah it's english and then <laughs> it's <yeah."> english <laughs> <laughs> that makes me feel so much better now because like, if you were to tell me hey it's french i'd be like all right okay all right and i don't speak french perfect <laughs> now that you tell me it's english which is my native language then um, wow that's yeah. sad Okay. So, so uh, can I ask you, by the way, I love psychology myself. Can we like talk about that? For, I, I don't know what to talk about it. I didn't prepare anything. I don't prepare well for this podcast <laughs> at all. I am a terrible host, but I did see that you like psychology. Yes. Yes. I just, I'm just fascinated. I think I got into SEO or I stayed in SEO because I, I sort of fell into it, not knowing what it was, because I was just so intrigued by the science of white people shop. And, and I thought that was what I was coming to do in SEO. So go figure. But I'm just saying. <laughs> well, that must have been a shocker. Yeah, yeah. Remind me of all the years I spent, like, removing backlinks or trying to get back uh, uh, research. So nice. far away, but hey-ho. It does tie in. Marketing psychology, psychology. Yeah, I think yeah. it all ties into SEO, especially now, you know, NLP and EAT and core updates and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it, do, it does tie in, especially when you get to preparing client strategy and understanding which the links between the product and what you're actually doing, trying to understand user behavior to inform what next you should do. So it does tie in, yeah. And I am now sort of deviating from being fascinated by why people shop to being fascinated by people and the reasons they do things. So I've done just finished a counseling course and I'm thinking of doing another one just because I'm just fascinated by human psychology. That's amazing. So cool. Um, okay, so we can talk about psychology for a long time. I would actually <laughs> love to talk about psychology for a long time, but this is an SEO podcast. Um, yeah. So what's on your mind today? So my first rant, feel free to cut the off, is I built my very first website with Wix. <laughs> <laughs> to say, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so you know how you try to explain to your parents what, what you do? And my, my parents run a school in Nigeria. And they were like, yeah, build us a website. And I was like, oh, then I was just starting out. This is many, many years ago. And I was just like, yeah, Wix seems easy. You know? And it was so it was so easy. I built that website and then I sent it to them and they couldn't even load it from the, the uh, internet connection that they had just because of the flash in it and all of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, but okay. For, for the record, as I try to adjust my volume without knocking my mic over, Wix hasn't used flash in like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so this shows you how old the website is. <laughs> Okay. I don't even know who I can no, find him. <laughs> but no, I'm not saying that for you. I'm saying that because there are actually people out there who are asking, so uh, does uh, Wix still use Flash? I'm like, does anything still use Flash? Yeah, I'm one of those that I'm kind of stuck in the weeks of the days I built that website. So I really have to, I, I might migrate it just for the fun of it, just to see what it can do. <laughs> I'm gonna, I was going to say, now you owe me a site build. <laughs> I will send you a free Wix voucher. You can build whatever site you want. The domain is yours for free. Do whatever you want. Let me know what you like, what you see, and give me some feedback. And I, I take shout outs, by the way. I'm a marketer. I'll take shout outs if you like it. <laughs> <laughs> you just totally stepped in it. Like now that's it. Oh, 
now I have to add that to my to-do list. Uh, you know, I have to. I don't know. But I will send you a free Wix voucher if you would like. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're Just welcome. Just bag myself. Just bag myself <laughs> some freebies. <laughs> um, but by the way, I don't want to disappoint you. We, uh, we don't support Flash anymore. Oh, dear. I was yes. trying to build this whole game with Flash. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Okay. <laughs> I just totally got played. Um, uh, what's really on your mind? Oh, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I've been doing this whole, I guess, my talks are usually around, like, ROI and talking about, like, how to show ROI and and uh, ranting about developers and they not implementing my... <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I guess my thing, it's kind of difficult to show ROI on anything if you can't get that work implemented. And because I work agency side, we sort of have this level where we sometimes don't have direct access to developers. We have to go through like the marketing manager on this side, or, you know, we can't just walk to the end of the office and say, hey, I've been telling you to do this for me, and you can't <laughs> do it. So it's, it's all of that, you know, building that relationship, trying to find hacks to walk around things and you know, that's, that's like the major bane of my life, really. So, yeah, that's. So how do you do that? Because it would be really nice to walk down the hall, smack the developer upside the head and say, fix this. So how do you, how do you get that buy-in? For us, for, for us getting the buy-in, we always start by creating that expectation with the client. And so we turn everything into a monetary value. And I know some people are not, like not everything can have like that, instant you can't show that instant step change into money but what we do is we use like statistical modeling so instead of trying to forecast via keywords which is the way you'll do it if you're doing things for content and all that we use like a statistical model to say okay if you work with us you'll have like a 10 percent, 5 percent you know increase depending on how well you do that and that way we can give like forecasts for the entire site and so everyone's like has their eye on the prize, which is that monetary value that we can bring. And so we use that as a driving force for like everything we're doing. Like we need to achieve this target. We <laughs> need to achieve this target. And it, get, it, it does help get more people involved. Like once you start talking money, then the CFO. I was going to say, say, right, everybody's, yeah. <laughs> everybody's intrigued. Wait, did you say money? <laughs> yeah, because when, when you start saying, well, the site architecture, no one ever understands. They right. always think like you, you. They always think you're talking about the the top level navigation, and they're like, "Wait, wait! You know, there's a mom in Leeds that needs to come to our website and go from here to there. How is she ever going to find us?" So it's <laughs> oh yeah. It's like donuts or like food. Like the second you bring like you you can like it can be the most boring lecture, the most boring whatever. But if you bring donuts, hey, free donuts! All of a sudden, everybody's coming along. When you talk money, all yeah. of a sudden you have everybody's attention. But how do you do that? You're, you mentioned, I think you're right. Like not everything is easily translatable into hard dollars, like building brand authority with your content. How do you translate that into a financial figure? Yeah, that's, that's difficult. But then when you look at things like EAT, so naturally if you have authority, then you rank higher, you get higher CTR. So we say, it, it, again, it's that forecasting the site as a holistic model, mm -hmm. because then it's like now, if you say building EAT, you're building for the whole site. You can't take one page and then take the keywords and then start translating that. Wait, so that doesn't work? <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about this all wrong. I would knock that down because you, you can still use that when you're doing like content forecast. Believe me, we have clients saying, oh, can you do a forecast for if we create this one blog page, you know, how much, how much will we get? From? So you still have people that have to put business case for everything. And then, you know, there's no perfect model, but you can't use that for that. But we prefer this holistic model is saying we're looking at the site as a whole. So everything, and we know that if you improve the authority, then the whole site all the pages on the site benefit. And that's why we prefer to do the forecast in that way. So you're giving them monetary value, but you're telling them, hey, it's going to take a little bit of time. Of course, it's going to take a little bit of time. And we always do, whenever we do that monetary value, statistical modeling, we, always, we have about four trend lines. So we say, if you do nothing, your site's been growing and it will continue to grow. This is your do nothing model. We're not saying if you don't use our services, you know, you're going to go copy to the internet. But that's then, honest. That's honest of you. Yeah, we, we, we always do that because then the client's interested because uh, I know SEO over time has gotten such a bad rap for so many. It's so true. 
by the way, that keeps coming up on this podcast over and over and over and over. So we just we just try to be as transparent as possible because you want the client to trust you. If they don't trust you, if you're saying when well, you're going to give us a thousand percent ROI and without us you drop up off the cliff of the edge and the client does nothing and they don't drop, then how do you push from you know it, it's such yeah. So we always show that model that you will continue to grow if your trend line's been going up. And then we say, okay, say, you know, we do 5% of what, you do 5% of what you say. This is what we expect. You do 10%. And then we have this unicorn scenario where the clients, you know, <laughs> they work with us, the developers do everything we want. And, you know, it's a match made in heaven. There are no algorithm updates, you know. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what you're, I never, I work with developers all the time. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't get me started. You mean, oh, I I digress, but then it's my but, show. But you know, okay. <laughs> but let me let me ask because you have let's say you have the, the CMO or the COO or the C whatever O or whatever, and then you have the developer, and they're like, okay, yeah, great great CMO person, but like this is a pain in the butt, and I don't want to do it. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, developers are okay. I don't think I this guy's talked about it. They're a rare, like, they're a very weird breed of person. Unique. You are very unique. I, I used to work with somebody over at Rank Ranger who was, who was married to a developer. She was complaining, like, you don't understand what it's like living with one. <laughs> That's terrible. I should name names. No, no, no. Don't name names. Um, but no, but they, they are a very rare breed of person that can at times be difficult to navigate socially. And getting buy-in is a social phenomenon. This is probably where the psychology thing comes in. Yeah, you need you need soft skills when you're working with people. You need soft skills. And I say to people that never pass up an opportunity to meet someone in person. Mm. If you can, never pass up an opportunity. Every time you go for a client meeting, always ask to speak to the developer. Always ask to speak to the, you know, see that person, take them out for a drink or bring like, donuts. Whatever whatever they like you know ask them about their kids or their i don't know whatever thing project they're working on show interest it's just it's that delicate fine line between yes you're pushing money on the client but then with the developer you have to cultivate this relationship you know just checking on just seeing anything that they're trying to do if they because i guess for them it's it's that you're coming in to say the work that they've done previously is broken or it's not working and so you need to be really sensitive in the way you know that you you put the information forward to the client and you need to be really collaborative i think this is the best approach however xyz knows the system better he knows he's been working with the code for a long time so what would you suggest you know just oh you know, boy <laughs> this is not this is not my strong suit <laughs> you have to, you have to be really and i think yeah i I always quote Martin Spitz whenever I, I talk about things like this, because he said sometimes we SDAs, we, we just know enough of the code to be dangerous with it. That's, and we have yes, this... <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. You know, you have this best case scenario in your head, what Google says is the ideal, what you think is the ideal. And you forget that, you know, development code is so different from production code. You can just put a question mark somewhere and everything falls off. And so it, it's that understanding that even though this is my best case scenario, best practice thing, I've not looked at that. Like I looked at under the hood, but it's just this page, this script. I don't know what's at the bottom of the page. I don't know what can break what. So it's, it's going in with that understanding that this is challenging for someone else. And that whilst this is what I want to do to meet my own KPIs, this person's KPI is to make sure this site is standing at all times. So is understanding, having that that sympathy in that relationship. Yeah. Yep. I, I get this with um, Core Web Vitals. It's a big conversation at Wix now, which it should be at, at all platforms, at all companies, and blah, 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 blah. So I'll show some of our developers, hey, you know, this SEO wrote this article. It's really, and they laugh. I'm like, what are you laughing about? It's like, this is like, you know, like first grade. It's like, what are you talking about? This is not how, like, you know how problematic LCP is, and they get a whole, like, lecture about oh. Not what I signed up for when I sent this article, buddy. I just yeah. wanted to share information. <laughs> I know, I know. But I no, but they're think. right. They're right. Yeah. And SEOs are, I'm not going to say wrong on an SEO podcast, incorrect, slightly, a little bit. Please don't get offended and turn this podcast off. Yeah. 
we often don't have the full picture. Yes, that's the good and way to so put it. It, it. We often don't have the full picture, and it's it's working with the person to get the full picture, seeing if it's what it to walk around it, knowing that you can't always get the site to best practice what is good for the client and what will drive the most commercial value. You know, so yep. it's it's understanding all of those things and not just like you know coming in with five tactics you've read these are the top things that everyone says we need to be doing and we need to do this now it's going to cost us 15 grand to implement and earn us 50 50 pounds at the end of a year but it is the top seo tactic right, but i, I but i read an article five best ways to do this how can it be wrong oh uh, i know i know it, it's it's all of those things so for instance like things like web p and web p is great and whenever you can't do it but then yep. i have you have clients that probably they're the people who visit their website a certain age and then all of them use Android phones. And then the, the, the developer says, well, to store those images on the CDN, it's going to cost us X, Y, Z. Should we be doing this now? And you haven't even checked analytics to see how many people visit that website from the device that can handle that. They're right, that, exactly. That image file format. So it's all of these things, making sure that you are checking what's actually best for the client, what works for the client, collaborating well with your developer rather than just like, Running this all sounds off. so logical. I don't understand. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I know. It's not I compute. It. I, uh, this is all things that I've learned from being burnt and experienced and jumping <laughs> the gun and meeting and then looking foolish. So it's, it's stuff that you learn the hard way and you're like, okay, I need to take a break here. I need to slow down, actually go and, you know, speak to someone first and come back, you know, do some more research. So what about something like Core Web Vitals, which... We don't know what the full impact is going to be. We could speculate that it's going to be big. We could speculate that it's going to be small. Um, you know, I just saw an article from Barry Schwartz the other day, the other day from when we're recording this podcast, not when it's coming out. You know, in his last line in the article was, I don't think Coral Vitals will be a big deal. Then you see a survey that Lily Ray did, and so many SEOs think that it will be a big deal. And now you have to go into a developer and say, hey, I think we might want to optimize the site and blah, blah, blah for Core Web Vitals. And then you have to realize, I think SEOs don't realize it because I've had a lot of conversations about this with developers. It is not, particularly LCP, is not as easy to fix as you think it's going to be. Really? And I, I am so <laughs> waiting. I First off, and I'll say this because it's an unofficial podcast. I love like the hate that Wix sometimes gets about performance and whatever. I'm like, you know what? Now you fix it on your WordPress site. Go ahead. See how easy it is. Then we'll see who's laughing. Uh, I know, I know. I I don't think my opinion, and maybe this podcast comes the day after Call Web Vital and everything's <laughs> well. <laughs> be perfect. That'd be, so, that'd be so perfect. And it becomes like a hashtag SEO fail, but I don't think it's going to be like the next mobile get in or, 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 or any of those things. There never That's was like, a mobile get in, like, there was always the threat well, of the mobile get in. <laughs> You know, it's just like relevancy wins every time. It relevancy, you have to give people the content they want to see. If not, they'll just bounce off. Imagine people waiting, I guess, concert tickets. You're trying to buy a concert ticket, servers overloading, everything is crashing, but you really want to see Madonna. So you stay in that refresh. I do want to see like... Madonna. I do want to see Madonna. <laughs> I've never seen Madonna. And then you're just like refresh, 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 because that's what you want to do. So, you know, in that in in that sense, I would say I like less people i don't think it's going to be the be all and end on however you know core web vitals and, and i know it's been repackaged and we've added some latest layout shift and it's become this whole it's just the normal like page speed and helping people to complete tasks quickly that should be the goal correct. for correct. everyone like if correct. you want to make more money that's what you should be it has the greatest implication on revenue it has the greatest implication on conversion rate on yes. every channel. So everyone should be pushing for it with or without the page experience update. It should be the thing everyone's going for. You know, it's not when everyone, like I get all these people like, do you want to contribute to our article? You know, the new strategy. I'm just like, it's not a new, it is not a new tactic. It's like, <laughs> speed, like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's so funny, by the way. So I was, I was, 
you know, Google came out and said, hey, you know, it doesn't really depend on what kind of website it's going to be. They're all going to treat Core Web Vitals the same way. I can imagine a lot of sites saying, you know what? Yeah, screw it. Because let's say you're a site like a grocery store, like a really like a lot of image galleries up front and blah, 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 because it's good for your conversions. And there's no way you're going to optimize that page to pass the Core Web Vitals and neither are any of your competitors, right? Yeah. So like whatever. All right, Google, do do your worst. Don't <laughs> rank the sheet just as the shit. It's right. Like rank something completely <laughs> irrelevant because I decided it's better for my conversions not to be as fast. And I know that's gonna make SEOs puke when I say yes, sometimes it might make sense for your site to be slower but convert better, depending on the site. Not that like, that, not to say that like it should be You're slow. Not I'm not saying it should that. be slow. I just tweet that. I, 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 no, someone's going to take it out of context. Slightly, like a fraction of a second slower, but have that extra image up there, image gallery up there, because it's going to help your conversions. Because again, I agree with you. It's really about conversion at the end of the day. Yeah, and I was thinking that. So I was looking at a friend's website and um, he's a film producer. And so his entire website is just a video, like one video. And I'm like, for yeah. people who are looking for his work, that's what they want to see. They're not coming to read about how he's, they want to see the work. They want to see how beautiful this is. They want to see those high quality images and how he's edited. It's just, it's so, and I was speaking to, I can't remember whether it was on Clubhouse and I was saying like- I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. I'm an Android user. <laughs> <laughs> Dead, so you can edit. <laughs> I'm not part of your exclusive club. I'm so sorry. Oh, we're so special, you know, we've got <laughs> Apple. <laughs> and, and I was like, culturally as well, there's so many, like, I sent, a, I built my website and I sent it to my friend who's American. And he's like, oh, you should make all the click, the buttons, like you've taken out all the contact me, click, because there's such a cultural thing about mm -hmm. making things yellow and having loads of pop-ups and buy here. But, and then, there are industries where that works. Like, have you seen the uh, My Pillow Guys website? Oh my god! No, I, no, I haven't. Oh, Should I? No, no, no. no I have to. <laughs> now hold on. Let's like, do this right now. We're doing it live. <laughs> We're doing it live. My pillow. I can't spell and talk at the same time. I can't spell anything. My pillow. Official My Pillow site. Oh, his speed is terrible. It's going really slow. Okay, there we go. Oh boy. Wow. Oh, there's a pop up. Wow. Click yeah. here. Click here. You know what it looks like? It looks like the old <laughs> circulars, like my mama cut coupons out of in like the, you know, the Sunday newspaper. Uh, yeah. Holy I mean, crap. Can... By the way, this is like totally on brand for this freak. <laughs> but the thing is, if you, I don't know if that pop up comes up on yours, a pop up comes up of mine directing me to the UK site. And whilst it's really horrible, you can see how for a different audience, they've pared it down. So yeah, culturally. Can... <laughs> Hold on. I'm, by the, I'm like still in shock looking at this site. <laughs> with God, all things are possible. What does that have to do with pillows? And I'm a religious person. <laughs> Holy crap. What is this? Oh, there's Sean Hannity. Oh, just my day just got ruined. Um, yeah. The, well, they've forced me, they've geo IP'd me to go to the UK site now. So I can't even see the. Oh, you can't. What? They don't really. They don't. You can't go in from the UK. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now I'm back on. But after a while, I'll share my screen with you if you want. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can see it. But and then yeah, and you can see that they've built a totally different site for the UK market just because like cultural context is so different. What I accept as an intrusive pop-up and stuff like is very different from what someone else would expect in a different, you know, so you can't, it's, uh, oh, yeah. I need to describe this to the, to our audio audience <laughs> because I only have an audio audience. I, I want you to imagine rectangles and there are variants of like bright blue and pink borders and giant pink and blue click here buttons in every single image. And there's like yeah. dozens of them. And then there's this guy and he looks like he's, it looks like he's going to strangle that pillow up there. <laughs> it looks like loads of flyers just stuck together. <laughs> yes, it looks like, you know, the flyer tree where everybody hangs up flyers and like it's yeah, more stable yeah. than tree. Yep. This is that, but a website <clears throat> version. 
This has nothing to do with my politics and versus his politics. It's just to do with like, oh my God, it looks like an infomercial. If you'd made it, if you turned an infomercial into a website, yeah, this yeah. is what it would be. This yeah, is like amazing. These, yeah, like all those TV sites that they sell at night. You wake up for dinner. Right. Yeah, so- <laughs> oh, I have, should I click on something? Let's click on something. I don't want them to follow me for the rest oh, of the Oh, now life. great. Like, Holy please. crap. Now my Facebook is be totally <laughs> filled with my... <laughs> This podcast has gone down a terrible and awesome wormhole. Oh, I don't want them to follow me. Oh, dear. Oh, Lord. Please. I purchased a chain knit throw, and it is amazing. The the color is beautiful. So soft. I will be buying more. Wow. All these reviews are all awesome. They're all five-star. Amazing. How did that happen? Every review is five-star. Yep. By the way, if you're going to fake reviews, okay, let me go, you know, not that I recommend you doing this, but you should throw in a four star every once in a while just to make it believable. Oh, no, he threw in one. There's one four star. OK, now I believe it. Uh, oh. Like if you say things like, Mike, we love you. This is right, right. Mike, we love you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Why my uh, pillow works? Like, I understand. Okay, why does my, my pillow work? It's a pillow. Like, why do pillows work? Let me explain to you why pillows work. They're soft and you put your head on them and they're like just good because otherwise you have to lay in a harder bed and it's awkward on your neck. But there's a lot of looks like fake science here about this. Okay. Well, he loves hugging pillows like Trump loves hugging American flags. Literally, that's what it looks like. I don't know. what to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually speechless for once in my life. I feel like we should do a whole podcast episode on this website. Thank you for showing this to me. You've made and ruined my day at the same time. <laughs> You're welcome. And I pray the pussies hunt you for our clue. <laughs> oh, the color palette. It's amazing. The bright pink. It's amazing. It's everywhere. Guaranteed the most comfortable sheets you'll ever own. Okay. Wow. What should we talk about next? I think, I think, I think we've reached the pinnacle of the podcast. <laughs> It's all downhill. It's all done. Um, (laughs) (laughs) This has gone off the rails. Okay, so for again for the audio audience, someone keeps trying to come into Miracle's room, and she keeps closing the door on them. Uh. Okay, thank you for coming on. Uh, again, our mind, my audience, and I, I think I didn't say it in the intro. I botched the intro. I always botch the intro. When will the next episode come out? I don't know. I put the podcast out whenever. I try to do it weekly. There's no guarantees. So subscribe. Miracle, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter, Mira underscore Inam. Yeah. Oh, LinkedIn. Or, yeah. Awesome. And I will link to that in the show notes for the podcast. Thank you for coming on and thank you for showing me this website. My pleasure. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Again, check out the um, the podcast. (laughs) That's it. I'm done. Just whatever. Toodles. (laughs) Talk to you next time. (laughs) 